Well, welcome to the video that explains how the constant pressure filtration simulation is achieved at Particles Org UK. Uh, and of course, it's really a model that could be applied in a spreadsheet as well. It's not unique to um, just to the, uh, the website. So um, what we have to, to do is make the assumption that uh, the person who's, who's uh, viewing this is familiar with the basic filtration equations. I won't be deriving those. They're derived from Darcy's law and of course there are, there, the derivations of those are available in any standard textbook. And um, if you want to have a look at the example simulation then you'll find it on this website just here. Okay so Starting off then with our basic definition, and this is our porous medium just here. And inside our porous medium, we have solid particles which are marked in the in the sort of orange colour there. But don't forget, we also have gaps between those particles. Hence, we have these two important terms down here, uh, which are the porosity or voidage, which we use um, epsilon. Uh, so that's a dimensionless, it's the volume of voids divided by the total volume of the bed. And then we have the solids concentration just here, which again is a volume fraction, only in this case it's the volume of solids present in the bed divided by the total volume of the bed. And of course, if you add the volume fraction of the concentration and the volume fraction of the voids present, that's got to add up to to one to 100 percent to unity okay so all that really is is a, is a statement that our porous media consists of either particles with a solid fraction concentration capital c uppercase c or voids where we've used the greek letter epsilon or epsilon if you prefer it and those two add up to uh, to equal one okay so there's our definition Right, so the general filtration equation, uh, without any assumption of um, constant pressure or constant rate or anything else, is, is shown just here. Um, integrating that equation arrives, it, one can arrive at uh, the equation that's, that's shown down here, um, where each of these uh, terms is shown on the next slide. The classic plot that's done here is, uh, if, if you're looking at experimental data for example, is time over volume as the dependent variable, the y variable, uh, against the independent variable which is volume. So in other words everything just here is constant under certain conditions. Um, and then we have another constant here which is the uh, to do with the filter, medium, membrane, cloth, whatever it is that we're using. Um, just to actually go through these fairly quickly before they're formally defined next door, uh, next slide, then Rm is the filter medium resistance, which is likely to change at the start of the filtration, but very quickly stabilizes at some hopefully constant value. Mu is the viscosity of the filtrate, a is the cross-sectional area of the filter and delta P, this is important, delta P occurs in, in both the intercept and the gradient of the T of a V plot. It's the total pressure drop, it's the pressure drop over both the filter medium and the filter cake. Okay. Um, then we have two terms here which we're going to be talking quite a lot about which are the specific resistance or sp specific resistance of the filter cake uh, and also the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate clearly a, a concentration term and we'll use a little c lowercase c for that and you'll notice that these two could actually change because in both cases we're using an average I'm using average as a subscript on alpha but the the bar on top of little c um, and we'll talk a lot about those two in uh, in a short while. Okay, so here is our formal definition then of the terms that we've just been looking at in the equation. 
perhaps uh, it's worth bearing in mind that the, the volume in this integrated form of the equation is the cumulative volume. So wherever you see V, volume, it's the cumulative volume that occurs at a certain time. Okay, It's not the rate, it's the volume of filtrate at a certain time. Okay, so as it says at the bottom here, we need to have a little bit of a discussion on the last two terms in the uh, in the um, in the list here, the specific resistance and the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate. So let's start with the specific resistance. Um, conventionally, we start by assuming something is incompressible. If something is incompressible, then the specific resistance inside our filter cake will be a constant. We don't need an average. Uh, that's not a problem, uh, because under those circumstances, n as the exponent clearly becomes equal to zero. So in the simulation, we can just put uh, zero into our, um, into our equations. Uh, however, n in the simulation is left open as a possibility to have a value, a finite value, because compression could be taking place. If n is zero, then alpha average is just simply equal to uh, alpha naught. That is our incompressible assumption. The specific resistance doesn't change, even though the pressure drop could be changing over the filter cake, we still have a constant specific resistance. Okay, so that's the incompressible assumption, which of course is the simplest case. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated when we allow alpha to vary, but here is a fairly straightforward constitutive equation. So long as we know uh, a value for n, the exponent on the pressure drop, uh, and that really is the pressure drop over the filter cake, not the total pressure drop in this instance, so it should be delta P C, I suppose. Um, but it looks a bit complicated here because it looks like we've got two variables to be known here, but don't forget that's n again that's just being used at this start. So in fact, really, that's just one constant. Sometimes you'll see alpha naught, one minus n, all combined into a single constant. So this, this equation is often simplified to alpha average equals alpha naught, delta p to the power n rather than splitting 1 minus n out. It comes from an integration, the 1 minus n term. We, we like to actually leave it split out. OK, so we can use this as incompressible by putting n equals naught into the equation and then just defining alpha naught as a value. That's the takeaway message there. The same is true of concentration. Remember, this is concentration by volume fraction, volume solids uh, concentration. So I'm going to use uppercase C um, for the solids concentration, and I'm going to give it the subscript AV uh, as, as in average value. OK, so yeah, there we are, C, C average. This is the volume fraction concentration. This is not the lowercase C, this is the uppercase C. So it's the volume concentration. Remember, it's epsilon plus c equals 1, the volume fraction concentration. How does that vary? Exactly the same sort of way as alpha, potentially a, a constant there because we've got c0 times by 1 minus u in this case, so those are constants. And if we had an incompressible condition, then all we would simply do is put in n u equals naught again into our equation here in which case it would just become C average equals C naught. OK, so again, we can cope easily with, with the incompressible case, but the simulation is left open to be able to cope with compressible, the compressible case, and that gives us how the average cake concentration varies as a function of pressure, again, across the filter cake. So it's not really delta P, total pressure drop is delta P across the filter cake. There is actually uh, a set of lookup tables which have both the concentration equation and the specific resistance equation for common materials. So if you're looking for an idea of 
some values for your material, you might find something pretty similar in the lookup table, and that's accessible from the uh, from the website in the directory called filtration. Okay, well the uppercase C up talked about on this slide isn't the same as the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate, so we need to relate the two together, and that's what we're doing just here in this particular slide. So we have concentrations just here and here, and we're relating it to the little c term, uh, average little c term, the bar term, and we need to know the average concentrations by solids volume fraction inside the cake, and then we've got this additional term that we need to know, apart from the density, uh, we need to know the solids concentration inside the slurry, and here it's by mass fraction, and usually this one is a, is a mass fraction. Okay, uh, it's possible to derive the same sort of equation solid concentration in slurry by volume fraction, but normally mass fraction is the easier thing to measure. So the, the equation to you, the simpler equation to use is, is one based on mass fraction. Okay, so this is actually calculated inside the simulation. So we're calculating the average dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate from the concentrations, once we've worked out what the concentrations are, according to whatever the pressure drop is over the filter cake. And then of course we do need the solids and the liquid density. So most of the inputs are available either from laboratory data or from the lookup table. Plus, of course, you'll need to know things like the filter area, uh, the pressure that's being used, the total pressure that's being used for the constant pressure filtration, all the things that were on that uh, earlier equation. So as far as the simulation is concerned, it breaks up the time value that is entered by the user into 10 increments plus zero time, and it calculates the filtrate volume present at those 10 increments. Obviously filtrate volume is zero at time equals zero. So we're solving the equation at each time interval, and the equation is the constant pressure filtration equation. So how do we solve it? It's, uh, it's solved as a parabolic equation. It's not uh, the linearized equation, the T over V equation that I mentioned earlier. Uh, what we have here is a parabolic equation and it's um, these are constant, or at least we can assume they're constant for each increment over which we solve. Likewise, this term here is a constant so it's parabolic or quadratic, if you prefer, in the volume of filtrate. And here is, of course, our time. And having rearranged the equation, it's minus time. Um, so everything in our brackets just here, the, the viscosity, the specific resistance at a certain increment in time, the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate at a certain increment in time, the pressure drop, because it's constant pressure, the filter area, they're all constants. So we've got a constant, and then uh, in the term on the, for the filter medium, the viscosity again, the filter medium resistance, the area, the pressure drop over the filter cake and filter medium, because delta P is the total pressure drop. Again, they're constants. Uh, so we have the classic equation uh, quadratic equation which is illustrated here and we can solve that using the conventional technique just considering the positive root. No imaginary numbers here, we just take the positive uh, root to the to this solution. And that gives the volume of filtrate, because that's what V is, the cumulative volume of filtrate at the selected time, the time chosen to do the solution. Once we have the volume of filtrate, then all the other interesting design parameters drop immediately out, because if we know the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate, then we can multiply the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate 
times by the volume of filtrate to arrive at the dry cake mass that's been produced. So we'd be using uh, the final value for C, little c, uh, if we've been allowed for compression. Uh, we can also calculate the dry cake mass per unit filter area, which is what's here. That follows again, knowing what V is, multiplying by C, dividing by area. And perhaps more interestingly, I mean, why would you want to calculate the dry cake mass per unit filter area? Well, it becomes very useful when you want to calculate the cake depth because you just also divide by the average cake concentration okay and the solids density because we need to convert from volume uh, between volume and mass because we have the mass and we need the density to convert that to the volume divide by the area gives us the very important term for a lot of filtrations how big the cake is going to be okay and that is important because we need a certain depth of cake for it to come off for example a rotary vacuum filter you can't get millimeter size cakes off the filter cloth they need to be the rule of thumb is six millimeters or, or bigger or greater um, for the cake to easily discharge from a rotary vacuum filter in the same way we don't want the cake depth to be too large because in an enclosed filter such as a plate and frame filter we don't want it to be full of solids uh, and still being trying to filter because you'll just block the whole filter up so that's so cake depth is, is an important parameter and that's tabulated in the simulation at, uh, at particles org uk and that is the um how we do the simulation and how you could do a simulation on a spreadsheet following the same procedure